I know, just like we did in Key Largo. All right, so early um, '80s country was bad, but it's that of- wasn't country. That was pop. Oh, no, was. that was pop. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Voss. And with me, as always, is my partner in chief, uh, probably the happiest guy in Kansas City proper, Noah Storzinger, buddy. How you doing? Good, good. Wouldn't say I'm the happiest, but, you know, it's... Uh... Oh, now, you're, you're, you're a little under the weather. Is that because that's all you've been doing is partying? Um, because you, I mean, is that why you left Minneapolis was because... You wanted to go to a, a, a title town, so to speak? Uh, apparently. I mean, it's, ever since I got here, they've been winning Super Bowls. So, um, no, this is the first Super Bowl I, I was alone. I ordered a pizza for myself, uh, just sat on the couch and watched the game. It was actually quite peaceful, but uh, was really thinking the 49ers had that one. Um, and then, obviously, uh, the city erupted in fireworks, which was interesting. But I get the day off of work tomorrow, so it's all good. Oh, you do it because of the parade or what? Yep, yep, just for the parade. So, I'll, I'll, you know what, I'll take it. Okay, so I, I I wanted to ask because, of course, I've only seen two in this city. Uh, and and so I, because I, I, that's, you know, that's what I think is cool about the show to be named later. Here we are providing you with a guy that's, you know, on the ground floor in Kansas City covering a Super Bowl champion team. What's the What's the atmosphere like right now in Kansas City? Um, it, it's not as big as it was, I would say last year, um, or even the first one only because they've done it three times now in the past, what, four right. years. Right. So it, it's getting to a point where, and I'm jelly. I'm just, people are asking me, why are you so upset about it? Or why don't you just seem very happy? And it's because for years and years and years and years and years, I just have never been able to see my team make it to this point. You guys have seen it three out of the four Three out of yep. the four years, you've got all the Taylor Swift fans that just all of a sudden love football. And in eight months span, they got to see a Super Bowl championship. And I've been here for, for 24 years. You've been here for 50 years and have not seen that. So right. that's why I was frustrated. So, okay. And, and I, w- I was going to ask because uh, I was talking and I have an, uh, another friend that I've known for about 20 years. He now um, resides in Kansas and I think he's, I think he's about halfway between Kansas City and Manhattan. Um, and when I saw him, he had the same complaint. He said, Chiefs fans are a bunch of assholes. They're, and, and so I was I was trying to pin him down, pin you down, as to what is it because now they just think that they're entitled to a Super Bowl every single year now? Or, or, or what? where'd the worm turn? Because I've witnessed a game at Arrowhead with my Vikings, a game we lost, and I thought Chiefs fans were pretty cool, and I, I never really had a problem with them. I think it's it's bad to say, but uh, it, it's the I think the people at the games are the ones that are probably the better fans. It's it's unfortunately it is everyone that that maybe doesn't go to the game but still follows the team that is just kind of obnoxious and and it it's interesting. And and I don't blame it when you have Patrick Mahomes, man, like that guy. Can win. It's he's not, what twenty eight, and he's got eight, how many more years in the league? Like he's gonna win another Super Bowl. Um, eight, so I don't blame you one. for that. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame you for that. But but yeah, it, it's getting to a point where it's becoming almost expected, and and it, it it's the new evil empire at this point. So now now and see, I, I still don't take Kansas City as that. I mean, there's a couple things I want to point out. Um, about the Chiefs win a couple days ago. Uh, but, you know, like, is there any any talk right now at all? Is, is Andy Reid's going to stay on? Or, like, is there any rumors down there about him saying, you know what, it's been real, uh, this might be my last one? Or, or is he all in for three more? I, I haven't heard anything. I think uh, it, there was always, I think, that rumor um, and I think if if he had won the Super Bowl, I, I would assume, like, if I'm him, like, I mean, I guess if he's still got it in him, you still got a great, well, great I guess you have wins to, more, but. You have to now. I mean, I, I don't know of any coach in the world. You, you, don't, 
you'd almost have to be completely comatose to not coach a back to back to back, a three peat, right? Like it, it just doesn't happen. So, I mean, I, I didn't think about that. There's no way he's going to walk away this year or, or next year. I, I would imagine. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know how old he is right now. I know he's, he's getting there, but it's, it's, Great coach. I mean, he, he's and yeah. makes well, Travis Kelsey mad. Enough, I, just embarrassing, Travis Kelsey. I I just you know, and I I don't mind him. I think he's a great ball player, but you know, those are the kind of things that make me want to think. An old coach goes, you know what? It, 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 you know, and, and, right? But but uh, no, I mean, I I think. I think he's got to be back. Like you can't hand that off to somebody else, especially someone like Belichick and, and just go, okay, we built the house. All right. Now I'm just going to hand you the keys. And, and so, uh, okay. But a couple points that I want to make on the Super Bowl. Uh, number one, uh, it, it shows what a great quarterback will do for you. If you have a great quarterback, uh, it's hard to argue. And it's not even a case to me. Like Mahomes to me is not Darth Vader. Like I really like watching him play football and he's a kind of guy and the same kind with Tom Brady. Like if, if, if the game comes down to Patrick Mahomes having the ball on the last drive of the game, I'm going to bet a hundred times out of a hundred that, that he's going to win, you know? And, and most of the time I would say that with Tom Brady, uh, I mean, I, I just felt sorry for the Niners because when it got to that point, I'm like, man, you should have that 10 point lead with five minutes left in the game instead of, you know, in the first quarter, it just, I mean, the Niners had chances, but what Mahomes brings and what he does. And like, he did not have the same kind of teams. I don't think this year that he's had previously. And, and I mean, I was already chalking it up, and that's the difference between being a Vikings fan and going watching a team that's got a guy like Patrick Mahomes, where you go, "It's ball game, man. It, it's complete ball game," because you knew there there was no doubt in my mind that the game was the game was done. Right, and and it's interesting because, I, and I think uh, Shanahan had described their their thought process behind receiving in overtime oh, compared to. I was going to ask you about that, and and it's it was like well. His idea, I think, was we'll go score, they'll tie it up, and we want that that yeah. final possession. But right. man, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would have put that ball in Patrick Mahomes' hands to to win the game because no. you've seen it happen how many times before? And I just, I, I felt like the 49ers could have drove down and and won the game still if if they had just kicked a field goal, whatever it may be. But I don't know. It it was a it was a good game. Well, well, that was interesting, and I I wasn't caught up. I mean, when you get old and senile, you have to have your friends explain it. I was like, now wait a minute, what's happening? Oh yeah, new rule, and I hear Romo going, oh, and they're playing for the quarter here, and because I, I I thought, well, no, they both teams get the ball in the first quarter. It doesn't it doesn't carry over to the second quarter. Oh yes, it does. Well, that's fine, but I guess being from a Madden player kind of point of view, you always kick off in, in, in a situation like that, where, you know, you're getting the ball back and I'll say why, because if, okay, if, I, I mean, I don't know, it's a horse of peace because I think Andy Reed did say that if the Niners would have had a touchdown in their opening possession, if the Chiefs scored a touchdown, they were going to go for two and end it there. They weren't going to give an opportunity to lose on a field goal or whatever it was. So, I mean, you can go back and forth. I, I don't know what – this is the first time that this has ever happened. You can't go back into history and go, well, remember what happened in Ot 4 when, you know, they did this, that, or the other thing and because they elected to defer or they elected to receive. This is all uncharted territory right now. So, it, you know – um, for me personally, I would have preferred to defer. Um, that way, you know, okay, we, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't think that you can say that Shannon dropped the ball for doing that. I know he's taking a lot of heat for that. Um, but I, I, I just, I, I think it's one of those 50 50 kind of deals. Well, did you see what came out recently was, I think it was like 60, 70% or whatever of, of the 49ers players didn't know the new rules for overtime. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. Yep. I know. Um, 
trying to think of who it was. Oh, I think it was Donovan McNabb before he was a Viking. Didn't know that when they changed it from sudden death to, you know, a field goal, you can, you can continue unless they scored. He didn't even know. And, and that rule had been in play for like six weeks at the start of the season. Like that does not surprise me at all that players didn't know what the rules were because why know what your job entails? You know, like it doesn't make any sense. Right now yeah. quickly, you're going to move. So this is what I got to ask you because, you know, I watched the game with a, a few of my, my really good friends and, I'm always bouncing things off just to see what I can take in for the podcast. And I think they might be getting tired of me because I'm talking like a podcast when we're talking about sports, but it's what we've always done. So fuck off. Um, this is what I, I stated this weekend and I've been saying it for a couple of weeks. And if I haven't gotten into it in depth on the show, I know that we've at least whispered about this. Justin Jefferson had a lot of, interviews uh during the Super Bowl week and you know the, the the one thing I think that was was locked down was the fact that he said he's not gonna make a move on his contract until he knows what our quarterback situation is but what I brought up was one of the reasons why we had not signed him yet and one thing that's very concerning to me and I tried to relaying this to my friends, but I, I don't think it took, I don't think they wanted me to say this, uh, was Justin Jefferson is not looking to be the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. Oh yeah, he is. He is looking to be the highest paid NFL wide receiver, but it goes way beyond that. I think that he not only wants to be the highest paid wide receiver, I think he wants fucking quarterback money. Okay, or if not quarterback money, are you really going to give the kind of money that I think out of the top 20 players, maybe I've said this before, 16 of the top 20 are quarterbacks. It might even be higher than that. I think Boza is is one of the only non-quarterbacks that's even in that area. So you're going to say, yeah, I'm going to give Jefferson more money than Boza, or I'm going to give him quarterback type money. So my question to you is, because we had this hypothetical deal, I think, in our last podcast. If it came down to that, and, and it was just like, no, that's not money the Vikings are willing to give you because, you know, it was like Glenn, Glenn Robinson asking the Bucks owner for a $100 million contract. And back then, the Bucks were only worth 77 mil. How are you going to give a guy? Okay, so if... If that's all fine and good and Justin Jefferson is what he believes and he should get the kind of money that he's looking for, which I think is going to be absurd over a position that is he a game changer? He is a hell of a wide receiver, but is he completely a game changer? Someone that you put all your eggs in that guy's basket over anybody else on the team. So, if it were up to you, Noah Storzinger, you were general manager Storzinger, and it came up that the Vikings could trade Justin Jefferson and their 11th pick for the number one overall, would you do it? Assuming he wants this amount of money? Yes, yes. I'm saying if the, if the contract's so big that the Vikings and the Wilfs are just like, no, I'm not going to do it. There, there's no way that you can hold me ransom for that. Would you am do I only Am I only getting the number one pick? Probably. And you're you're maybe guaranteed a Patrick Mahomes, but maybe not. That's the, the crapshoot with the draft. So initially my thoughts are no, only because – I just, I don't in my head, I, I think there's obviously that possibility that he wants this outrageous amount of money. Oh, it's going to be I, bad. It's going to be bad. I, dude. I just, to me, like if, if this guy doesn't sign an extension, he walks, whatever, I, he's by far one of the best receivers this team has had. And, yep. and it's, it's, I, I don't know. And I don't blame him for wanting to know what the quarterback situation is going to be like, because this is a generational talent that needs to win. 
Yep. And so, I mean, you look at Jefferson, you look at Cousins, you look at Daniil Hunter. Realistically, you're not going to be able to re-sign all three of them. So you're really looking at what, where do you pri- what do you prioritize right now? And defense is big. And but, but at the who same did time, I mentioned, like, I mentioned Boza, who is a rush, right? A, a, a rush defender. It, but there aren't any wide receivers in that category. And here's the deal: Justin Jefferson, to me, he proved a lot in that Detroit game, the last Detroit game. He had. Sean, no, what's it? What, I'm sorry, not Sean Manning. Why, why do I keep saying that? Who, who, who's our quarterback? That he sucked, the crybaby. The, uh, oh my gosh. Um, right, you, you forgot about him? That Nick, quick, Nick Mullen. Nick Mullen. Nick Mullen. That Detroit game, I watched that game at South Dale Med Center with my boy. And during that game, I was like, holy cow, Justin Jefferson is a stud. Complete stud. Made. Mullins look good, okay, but they still lost the game. And so my point is, if you have a stud at that caliber, is that going to be enough to get you over the top compared to a quarterback? Probably not. And so I don't know if you can do a, a big dog Glenn Robinson kind of contract with a wide receiver. See, I, I think I disagree, and I, I, I just think he changes the game enough where I understand we lost that game, but you also have to realize half the team was injured. It, half the team was, was not playing. Um, and w- this team has a lot of nice pieces when they're healthy, absolutely. Um, but to me, Justin Jefferson, w- w- if he wants – if it's an out – if it is just a, a godly amount of like – And that's what I'm saying. Money, Yes, but I I almost need a number at that point because look, if he wants a lot of money, I I still you're talking forty mil a year, forty mil a year for whatever the, how long he sells for. Who's the highest paid wide receiver right now? That that I do not know, I'm but I, I guarantee they're not making forty mil a year. I guarantee it, and and I would I would challenge you to look that up because you're you're not ta- you're you're talking about signing cousins for 40 mil a year for the next two years. And that's a big deal. You can't put somebody who's never made that kind of money at a skill position like that other than quarterback in the same, in the same group and then say, Oh, but I want Kirk cousins to be my quarterback because if he signs that I guarantee that you're not going to get the guy you want to, to be under center. Right, and I think that's that's a double edged sword for for Jefferson right now is to figure out if you want Cousins on this team, we're not going to pay you forty million because. So I just looked it up here. Who do you think the highest paid one is right now, off the top of your head? I don't know. Yeah, uh, no, Tyree no. Kill, Tyree Kill, thirty million. Thirty mil, okay. So if he asks, so you for- know Jefferson's going to ask, and I make more than Tyree Kill, and he's not going to go. It's not going to be like an auction where you're like, okay, I'm going to go 30 mil plus a dollar. He wants to shatter the wide receiver mark for how much a wide receiver is paid annually, but he doesn't even want it classified as the position player. He wants, this is what I think, he wants to be in that quarterback kind of money conversation. And I don't know if you can I Tyreek Hill worth 30 mil a year. No fucking way. No way. It's well, ridiculous. Next, next highest is Devontae Adams at 28. Um, and then Cooper Cup at 26. But I'm gonna say Cooper. It, if he if he says 35 million, what do you say? C D Lamb. I would say yes. I would too. Absolutely. I would say yes at 35 mil. 40 mil, no, I would not. I would okay. not do it. And and so, I mean, I I don't know, but the one point that I, I think I made with my friends on Super Bowl Sunday, like I say, I think for the most part, they just want me to stop talking. Um, but the, the point that I made was at that position, everyone said how screwed we were when Stefan Diggs left, right? Enter Justin Jefferson. Okay. Um, Mr. Addison 
is right on his heels, man. I'm not saying he's up to Jefferson's caliber at all. I'm saying you have a great quarterback. Addison becomes a really good wide receiver because he's already pretty good. And then that means that, you know, wide receivers aren't going to be around for 40 mil a year for 10 years. They're just not. All right. They're going to lose a step, whatever. They may still catch the ball, but they're not going to have what a Justin Jefferson has right now at all. Okay. So I was trying to, you know, devil's advocate. I was trying to say Jefferson's job might be fillable. It, uh, it doesn't mean that you're going to get the same caliber player, but it's fillable enough to get it depending on who your quarterback is. And there aren't a lot of Patrick Mahomes around. Okay. To me, it's only been a year, but there's not a lot of CJ Strouds around. I don't know who the next Patrick Mahomes or CJ Stroud is, if that's even in this class. Right. What I'm then, saying is if you have a shot at it, would you take it and say, I think we can fill in the pieces without Justin Jefferson? Because guess what? I don't really miss Diggs that much. I really don't. Well, no, right I now. don't I don't think a lot of Vikings fans do with his attitude, but it the, the thing with the, the quarterbacks in this draft class is it's it, there's not one guy where I think you can look at and say like, he's going to be a stud in the NFL. Yep. It, it's so it's either high ceiling or, or it's going to be bottom floor. Like it is, it is. That's why it's scary for me to think like, yeah, you could get the number one pick and, and go and get a Caleb Williams, whatever you want to do. But how bad would that look if, if Caleb becomes a bust, right? And so I, I don't about, know. Um, do you equate a Justin Jefferson to a number one overall? Do, do you think that that's comparable? Because my point is if you want that kind of fucking money, you want quarterback money, then to me that is I wouldn't even throw in the 11th round pick. I'd say I give you Justin Jefferson for number one overall, period, and we keep the number 11. I was going to say, I, I almost would want more just with, yeah. with that because I, I just think <laughs> he's he's worth that right now. And it's especially like he is at an all-time high in value, especially after the season that he had while missing that many games. Right. So, right. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're going to move unless you got anything else on the NFL, Super Bowl, you, you don't want to okay. talk to you. Okay. Um, I'm very excited – uh, friends, because we not only have a guest again tonight, but we have our first celebrity guest. It's not an athlete. So, I mean, he was, he, he did play, but we have our first celebrity guest uh, that we are going to be bringing in to the show to be named later podcast uh, in just a few minutes. And there's a lot of history with this, this guy, this guy actually was on the very first show to be named later Carol Levin show. And, and we'll probably talk about that in a few minutes, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about having guests and having, uh, having celebrity guests. So that's where we're going to go with this. All right. So we are back now. And like I said, show to be named later does not lie. We have another guest in our midst and it is very special because this is our first our first celebrity guest on the show to be named later podcast. So let me introduce the man with, I believe the shortest rendition of the national anthem played at the Super Bowl. our good friend, Chris Castino. Thank you, John and Noah. It's not really that special. My mantra is that no one is no one special. It's, it's really how I raise my kids. And I think it's a good, uh, it's wise words to live by. Okay. I think we were getting out of a uh, a um, a time of our culture or society where everybody thinks they're special, and I, I just, Johnny, wow. I, I just don't think it's good for anybody. Wow. Let's and, not. So this this won't be that special, and okay. I think well, that's it okay. Is, it is for I me. Think it that's is for okay. Me. And and for our our viewers who don't know what I'm talking about, um, Chris Castino uh, is a part of a band called the Big Woo. Uh, he's a local musician, uh, national musician. Um, maybe the second best thing to come out of Northfield, Minnesota, behind Malta Meal is the Big Woo. Uh, so we have, we have, we and and so the last time I, the last I'll time I saw, that. what's that? You'll take that. Oh yeah. Okay. Last time I saw Chris, 
his band was playing the main stage at First Avenue. So it he, he is a celebrity. And folks, Chris Castino was on the very first show to be named later on Carol Levin. Do you remember that experience? As a musical guest? No, yeah. no, sir. You had been a musical guest on on oh, public on the cable access. On, right. But you were, you had a special role on our very first show as a Green Bay Packer, Minnesota Viking Christmas Eve Day football game between those two teams, and you were a part of it. Yep, yep. We were on location, right? Correct. At the metronome back then. The, oh god, the metronome! Can we talk about the metronome? We can. So, it, thankfully, mercifully, we don't have to talk about the Vikings, right? I mean, it's, we're, we're not. We're gonna throw, but I, I'm disappointed fine. you didn't talk about. So Noah, Best Buy gave us money like you couldn't believe, and we went through it like shit through a goose. But our first show, we <laughs> hand fan cuffed a Packer and a Viking fan to each other. Um, my good friend threw up in my my current boss's inner inner bathroom as we were interviewing her her mom. Anyways, so they gave us a, a shitload Carol, of money. That, yeah. that was not on. That was not shown on the show though. That was not shown on the that show. Was not but part you of were, the, the, the so program. Best Buy gave us their Humvee vehicle to to go to all of our different stops that we did, and Chris Castino was the driver of that right. Humvee. It's crazy. Okay, so here's my first question. I mean, being a musician, uh, you know, the, one, one of the big prop bets is how long the national anthem is going to go, if it's going to go over two minutes or not. And I tried telling my buddies, I was like, no, it's Reba McIntyre. She, older country all the way across the board. She ain't going over two minutes. She's going to sing it the way that, I don't know, maybe it should be saying. I, I'm not going to get it. My question to you is, if your band or Chris Castino, the solo musician, were asked to perform the national anthem at the Super Bowl, would you go over two minutes, under two minutes, or right around? Well, I first of all, I thought that was a weird performance. Something sounded weird about it. It was just like there was... It sounded like she was, it was like the most exa exaggerated, over the top karaoke performance that I'd ever right. seen. I don't know. It was really bizarre. Yep. yep. Um, the plastic <clears throat> surgery didn't help. Yeah. yeah. Everything seemed just so strange with that. But I like Reba. I like Reba. So I'm not going to rip off. Hey, she's a, what they call her? A, a, she's a multi talented uh, icon. I mean, she's, a, yeah. she had a TV show. I know um, that. I that fall asleep you know, every once in a while. It's not after Cheers. Uh, she was great in Tremors with the uh, dad from Family Ties. She was great in that. Um, okay, so can can you give us an insight as to how you would how uh, you would perform the? First of all, did you have you ever performed the national anthem ever? In I, I had a um, I had an opportunity this past summer to uh, to do it. Uh, with a couple of the guys from the band at a uh, Dundas Dukes town ball game, and, ball. Uh, yeah. and I and I couldn't, I didn't, wasn't able to do it. Um, but I have, I have a lot of, I, I have reverence for the song, and I think that it's, uh, it deserves uh, the certain gravity. Um, just call me old fashioned, but um, I, I think it, I think it needs to be a little bit snappier. You know, when you go, what I love is when you get like a vocal group in there, not some, right. not, not, a, not a, you know, a, a, a pop star who's going to do, I mean, you know, there, there's Whitney Houston and then there's everybody else when right. it comes to performances. I mean, she crushed it. Um, Wait a minute. Have you ever heard the Marvin Gaye rendition from the 1983 NBA All-Star game? Yeah, that was Which pretty was good his, too. His last, I think it was his like last yeah. big deal before. And like, right. even the players on the on the floor were like, "What the fuck are we watching? This is." He had the sunglasses on, didn't he, or yep, something? Yep, yep, yep. Very good, very good. Okay, so so you would go maybe a little bit over two minutes. I don't know. I don't know how. Uh, I don't think it should be over two minutes. I don't see how right. it could be. There's two. What? There's there's two verses, but right. it's like 
Da, 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 da. I mean, I'm like, I I would go. I I, I like it. Like I said, it, I want it snappy. I, I don't I don't need the melisma. The I don't need to. I got no chops to show off. You know, I'm pretty yeah. straightforward. So I'm gonna okay. go. I'm, I'm solidly under two minutes, and I think I think that's the way it should be done. Um, yeah. Reba, I think that was so the easiest. Was it? I think that was the easiest prop bet there was. That it because it was no over. It was going over two. It was or did did, did or did not. It did not. It did, it did well, she, or it did not. It did not go over two. She's saying brave twice, and it didn't count. It was wow. close. It was close. <laughs> this is what we do on the show, buddy. Oh. What we do on the show. Oh man. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna keep going, even Basically. though I know maybe it's like. You know, when Alan Page became a judge, his biggest hang up was that people would be like, now, Your Honor, uh, just like in football, you want a first down play that, and you know, he'd be like, any reference that you make to football, automatically you're going to lose this case. You don't want to hear it. So maybe you don't want to hear music uh, questions, but, you know, you, since you're there, no, I'm not. Really well. Uh, do you happen to catch the uh, halftime performance by uh, by? Uh, For sure. No, it was John Moran's dad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I usually skip the halftime show. It's uh, it's it is pure recalculousness. I um, what did you think? I, I honestly did not watch it. Um, so even your wife doesn't even like. Oh, hey, I don't. Oh, care she watched it. Score. She, she wants it. to watch it. And you you won't watch That's it. That's all she wants to watch. And you don't want to watch it. She wanted to, she's like, she's like, Chris, it's getting late. It was like, we had made yeah, it. I, I don't, and, it, there was like <laughs> six minutes left in the fourth quarter. She's like, should we leave? I'm like, well, we've invested this much to this game. I mean, yeah. we can't leave now. Wait, where um, were you at watching the game? We were at, uh, we we're at some relatives. And so <laughs> at halftime, you conveniently went out to smoke a cigar. Like a, yeah, I did. I went downstairs. Like, nope, I'm not even going to give it a try. I don't know. Fill me in. Was it any good? No, I, I, you know what? I, I, I know exactly how it went. I don't need to have watched it. I know exactly what it looked like Pretty because bad. every one of them is the same ridiculous. Uh, uh, what there were like 400 dancers and and there was a yeah, and they giant brought, inflatable. When we saw Jermaine Dupree, it was like, what? Uh -oh. What the fuck is Jermaine Dupree doing out there? And then he didn't even sing. He just said, mm, and then it was on to something else. The only thing I liked was ludicrous at the very end, but by that time you had lost me completely. I thought the last two years, this year, and I thought Rihanna was pretty bad. Like, and I don't know if I'm, I'm, I like prejudiced Rihanna. or biased because we all know who gave the best, the best halftime performance of all time. And Eric. I don't, feel, no, I'm just kidding. No, no. Noah, you know who I'm thinking of, right? Mr. Prince. I, I would say, I mean, you know, we may be biased, but I, I think Prince had, did the best job uh, of any halftime show. Is that what you're thinking? Absolutely, because when, it, remember, it was in a torrential downpour, and when they came <laughs> in, they are like, I don't think we can do the show. What, what do you want from us? And he said, can you make it rain harder? And then he went in and gave... A better performance than the Super Bowl itself, which you know, uh, it, it, in, was, it was. In yeah, ten it was years, awesome. in ten years, you'll tell that good. story, and it, it will have been a. It'll be a hurricane that he performed in. That's the beauty pert of near, it. Pert near, and and here's the thing. I the last two years, I have known no songs in the halftime deal. When you had Bruce, or you had. Um, I'll even give you Janet and Justin Timberlake. I mean, to me, Prince gave the best halftime performance except for Janet. Okay. But with when, when you had all these performers that people have known, maybe Noah doesn't know the songs, when you have Bruce Springsteen or, like you said, Aerosmith or Prince or, like, they just ran down and you're like, man, this is, they're going to, the last two years, I'm like, I don't know. When he, I don't, I don't know anything. So and is that I, because I'm an angry old man? Do Do you think that that the way you're not liking the the halftime shows anymore is because you're just not familiar with the songs? Because personally, I grew up with Usher 
I thought the first half sucked, but I liked the second half of the show because he was doing a lot of the songs that I appreciate and I liked from him. But do you think okay. for you, where you so, just don't know the songs, you can't now hold really? On. Now hold on. Out of the five guys that I watched the game with on Sunday, only one guy had bet on the game. And the only bet he made was a prop bet on what Usher's first song was going to be. Ooh. All right? He was going to get paid right. They didn't even play the motherfucking song, the whole the whole deal. Which and I'm one? like, was it, yeah? Was it that I, one? I don't know. No, he did, yeah. Was it a uh, what <laughs> no, you know was, what was? No, I, I don't because he told me 18 times and I still, oh, don't care. Um, oh, I know. I, I bet I know what it is. Oh, oh my God. OMG. Nope. Nope. Um, nope. Anyways, the point was even the people know that one. He was more down, I thought, not because he lost the bet, but because he was like, what the fuck am I watching here? And I, I didn't know. I really didn't. I, I thought those outfits looked like, uh, you seen the movie Dodgeball, the ones that Ben Affleck wears and, you know, his team wears and maybe not. I don't know. So that's my football question for you there, Super Bowl guy. He's 5'8", Usher's 5'8". I don't know why I need, wanted to say that. <laughs> he just thought he comes off taller. Uh, five, eight. Would, you, would you play a Super Bowl halftime deal? <clears throat> oh, of course. You know, the... You've heard the thing. Uh, the artists don't get paid anything. No, they have to pay. They, they got to pay. pay. <laughs> you got to pay to play. No, you do. And so my question was, so do they just, does the NFL target somebody and go, that's who I'm going to get. All they have to do is pay what, whatever, however it is, how much they have to pay. But they do. They, they have to pay to play at the Super Bowl. Or do they have five different artists and they're able to bid on okay we really want an usher but acdc took it and they're willing to pay more which is not true because they've been trying to get acdc for like the last 20 years and they say we don't play medleys they just want to jam one <laughs> song and that's it they won't go through five of their best and so they hell won't yeah. do it. So, hell yeah they won't right, oh, that's, that's rock and roll man uh <laughs> So I, I'm trying to figure out how they actually determine if if they do bid on it or if they just go, no, you know what? This is the route we're gonna go. If they're willing to pay, that's it. It's a lot of uh it's a lot of like trying to sweeten the deal. It's like, all right, Dr. Dre, we just here's guess what? We just got Mary J. Blige. Now what do you think? You know, and you just keep adding names into the party. Now will you come? And you know, if it's well, that that you know, was my question. If, if for Vegas, because the NFL can afford to do whatever, and because I got shot down on, I was like, why don't you take everybody who's got residency in Vegas, like you two and Adele, and each motherfucker gets to do one song, okay? And then, well, with stage deal or whatever and i'm like it doesn't matter the nfl could afford it that would be really cool if you had only vegas acts or if you were able to get like the original rat pack you know to like somebody to do all those roles i don't know something vegas theme but i wasn't impressed those are great ideas John. great ideas you got there yeah, well i will say as far as music I, it's interesting and um uh, i feel like the the Super Bowl is hard for me to watch because uh as a musician like <clears throat> music live music is like sports um there's an energy there's there's a crowd there's the crowd interacts with the teams or whatever or with the bands and you know we go to sporting events to be a part of that audience if you will and over the years, it's like <clears throat> the crowd at Super Bowl games just slowly, like real the real fans, it's like a chart here. Where it's like corporate douchebags down here, real fans. <laughs> and it's like, and now it's all corporate douchebags at the games. And they're just, it's like if I were to play, if, if let's see, uh, you know, 3M 
has a big corporate event and they want the big woo to play and stuff, I'm sure they're going to pay really well. And then you go and you set up, everything's great. And then you start playing and nobody really cares. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's a corporate party and they're rubbing elbows. And and that's what the Super Bowl is. That's what it is. And Absolutely. so there's no, <clears throat> so you're watching it and, you know, you're like, this should be exciting, but it's kind of like, there's just kind of a, a hum over the crowd, and sometimes they make noise. It's like the el- the fan element of a of a exciting championship sporting event is not there. If you went to a World Cup ch- final, it would be insane. Right, it would be right. so loud. There would be so much energy. But the that's the, a good the point. Super Bowl has lost that part of sports so it's really weird it's like you're that's a really good point but here's the thing the NFL excited can afford- about it unless it's your team obviously right but they can afford to do it because nobody because basically all you're doing like i i like to watch the games with the volume down you know what i mean like so that yeah. i don't unless it's it's the kind of atmosphere that you're talking about but that's just it the nfl can get away with having one of the most boring crowds in the biggest game of the year because they have more money than any pro sports in, in the world right now. Well, the, yeah, the way they do it and the way they monetize every moment is genius. I mean, they're yep. really good at that. So I you give them credit for that, but it doesn't make a good sporting event. Right. Go ahead. Um, Noah, what do you got? Do you know the average ticket price this year? for the 10,000. I think it was eight thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I heard ten, uh, but yes, that is what I heard. Uh, That's the problem. That it was at least ten plus, and and so when you said douchebags, you're exactly right because cool guys like you or I, unless somebody gifted us that, aren't going to probably go, go to that game, right? Even if your team <clears throat> makes the Super Bowl, like I remember '98, we're driving to Miami. We're, we're going to get in no matter what. And I would have maybe, you know, done three, three years salary to go to that game, but we're not talking about that now, you know? And, and no. well, I, yeah, I mark my words in five years, 10% of the crowd will be Saudis. No, oh, I just, I was going to say Chinese, but well, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I, we are I mean, I'm not like mad about it, but I'm you just know what? It's, it's bizarre because thing. it'll all be on pay per view, anyways. So, you know, that's great. No, because they can't get their ad revenue on, on pay per view, it would change the whole dynamic. <clears throat> I don't but know. But if you want to segue this into baseball, I will say that <laughs> that uh, when uh, the twins were in the postseason last year and and uh, and we got uh, we got Toronto and John, you know, I have talked about this uh, for some reason. Well, I know exactly what the reason is. I was going to say for some reason, but there was just the tickets for that first series against Toronto. were just not, were not um, popping off and there were cheap seats to be had, like really cheap, like almost cheaper than a regular season, a good regular season game. And, um, you know, and the reason is, is because people are like, well, I know what's going to happen. They're going to lose and I'm going to wait. If they win a series, then I'll go. So what you had was a bunch of people that could afford, like, I like to think real fans that could afford to go. And uh, they picked up, you know, they, they went online, they got the apps, they're young, they know how to do that shit. And, um, and they packed target field and it was so great it was the best crowd experience i've ever had at target field we were we were rowdy and we were talking our shit and it was great and and it and and rocco said it after the game he was blown away so there's something to it and there's like i don't know there there's an argument to be made that you should not worry about making your money on all the tickets and stuff and just make tickets affordable and pack your games. I agree. That's that's why I don't, I don't ever to listen to us, though, John. They'll never listen to us. No, I know that. And, to- and that's why I don't go to T-Wolves games right now. Now, but but here's here's the thing, though. So let's get into the Twins right now. Well, all right, let me put my hat on. Okay, because, you know, 
Chris Castino is one of us, Noah. He is Twins fan through and through. Um, been to many games with him in in different cities as well. Uh, but 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 here's the thing, because <clears throat> we talked previously on this podcast about the grade that the Twins got in the offseason as far as their offseason moves. And ESPN came out and said straight out F. A.J. Pruszynski called us out about the pull ads have all the money in the world. They can spend money on doing something. And, and we got a very, very poor grade because I don't believe we've gone above and beyond. And we talked about Rocco saying, well, the TV deal didn't come through, so we didn't have to make a move or we couldn't make a move, which is bullshit. But as a Twins fan, and you're talking about ticket prices because Saturday I'm going to a – a, a ticket draft um, of a buddy that gets really good seats and the price keeps going up and they can, they can bend on that because of, Hey, we won a, a, a playoff series last year. So now we can bump up the ticket prices, but have they made this team better? And are you comfortable with the lack of nothing that they've done? Because we can go, go through all the positions, but, to me, the Twins have done a disservice to Twins fans everywhere because they had a good year. And, it, you know, if, if there was anybody playing in the Central, it would have been a great year. Okay? We wouldn't have even made the playoffs. Had there anybody in our division that could play with us. But you have a chance right now to capitalize on what you did last year on three teams, four teams that aren't that great – and the Twins, to me, did not a lot to make themselves better and did one of these to the Twins fans because you could you could be not just a better team, an upper echelon team, in my, in my opinion. And they did not do that, in my opinion. <clears throat> I um, <clears throat> That certainly is the popular view that you hold right there. Uh, I don't agree. I, I, I mean, well, um, fan graphs um, came out with the thing ranking our bullpen second in Major okay. League Baseball. So what I'm talking about, though, is the bullpen. And the bullpen is, you know, it's such an underrated and – it's like tr it's like a casual football fan trying to understand offensive line talent. You know, it, it's if you know, you know, and if you don't, you just you know, you're just you you know, you, those fans are just looking at offense and things like that. But but the bullpen is uh, is crucial, and if you lose. <clears throat> Sonny Gray, uh, who loved to go deep into ball games, which I love. But, you know, then you have to make sure that your bullpen is strong. And it and he ended up having a pretty good bullpen last year. Pagan kind of turned it around and yeah, Duran Duran was locked in. being a starter this year. And that's what I'm saying. If if your bullpen, you can have the best bullpen in the league. But if your bullpen consistently goes in down in the game, good luck to you, sir. I, I, I challenge you. Well, we, got, we got offense. We got offense now. We can score runs, and we have for the last couple of years. I don't think being down in games is really what we need to worry about. I think we just need to, you know, we need to now, just wait a shut minute, down. You, but but you, you put a lot of pressure on guys that are in there only their second year. I'm not worried about Royce. Royce is going to be a stud all the way across the board. But Julian Walner. Worried about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and well, we can talk yeah. about Walner. What's that? We can talk about Walner. I think, I, yeah, I thought, yeah, Julian. Julian's going to be. He's not going to be a rookie. He's going to be a second year player. And I heard his defense is getting better, though. Yeah, his defense, I think, will be serviceable. Um, and you know what you saw with him is he he went up and down a little bit, but he. It's not like that rookie who starts hot and then 
and then all of a sudden you blink and it's the end of the year and he's and he's hitting 258. And you're like, well, wait a minute. I thought he was no, he he ended up leaning like his offense and he went through some ups and downs, but he kept at it and he he was consistent. I was really impressed with his consistency. Um, so I think offensively he's he's gonna be okay, but you never know. You never know what what one off season from Major League Baseball That's does to your guy. And Walner is the same thing. I mean, everyone was was very high on a guy by the name of Jose Miranda, which I, you know, he was going to be off this team just like six months ago, and now suddenly he's reemerged. But you, well, you understand he reemerged you put that kind of pressure on that many young guys, and I'm still who I'm sorry, who's going to play center field? Because if Buxton was healthy going in last year as a DH and play the same amount of games, you're really going to put him in center? And here's the deal. You got no Michael A. Taylor coming in to play center. Maybe Castro will get you through. Maybe Kepler will get you through in a few games. But you have no center fielder. You don't. So Yeah, I... They haven't committed, have they, for but to to be to Buxton? I mean, I they've talked about well, it. But he identifies as center field. He, he committed. He yes. committed. He he said at a he Twins fest to, he was Noah, going. Yeah, <clears throat> he wants do, to. Do you, do, Noah? Do you believe that will happen? I I think opening day Byron Buxton is a center fielder. Do I think he's going to play more than sixty games? No. In center field really? or oh. both in the year. I I don't think he's he's not playing more than sixty games in center field. No, I think he's Gross. getting hurt. I, I just well maybe the, if the they track record in. isn't there. No. What if you what if he plays sixty in center field and he plays thirty as DH? Uh, you know, this season one hundred sixty two games. What <laughs> but I would take that. But I mean, I'd take one hundred twenty games from him. I would absolutely that adds take up that. to. No, that's not even that's ninety, that's 90 games. games, but. But it, I think having his bat in the lineup is better than not, which was um, the idea of him. Of he's just pulling the ball, but that's fine. Um, you understand where I'm going with with this, though. Like, it, no. Do you want it, Would you like to um, summarize <clears throat> that? I don't think the Twins, because we haven't even started talking about their their starting rotation. Okay, you can name probably four of them, but I don't want. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about the starting. I don't want the Varland between Minneapolis, St. Paul, Varland, Bailey Ober. I don't know who this guy is. This guy's coming in. Okay. You had a solid, even Maeda's record didn't show what a great pitcher Maeda was. And I'm not saying that we should have signed them this year, but you don't have a rotation that you had last year going in. And you got a lot of question marks. And a but lot I, of I, I'm confused. I I think you are counting this rotation short on what it absolutely could be, though, because of you have an ace in Pablo. Yep. you've always been a Joe Ryan guy. I don't know why always. Joe Ryan is all of a sudden. A, a, He's a, not. A lot of Twins fans. I understand. I'm counting him. I know it. They so, don't like him. They but, think but, he's not even a three. No, he's obvious. He's absolutely a three. Yeah. Bailey Ober, I think, becomes a, a two this year with how he was pitching and. I understand maybe you don't want the Louis Varlin back and forth, but you know, a lot of teams do it. And and it was the exact same thing with Bailey over. And I personally like him out of the bullpen personally, but with how many arms we've added to the bullpen. Yeah. Let's try him as a starter. D Scafani is going to be interesting. I, I don't know about that. I don't but know. I, I, don't I, also he makes a team. I don't, I, he makes a team. He makes a he team. Makes okay. Chris, Chris, Chris Paddock will be interesting. <clears throat> I, I'm not entirely sold on that. Just with everyone was, raving about his his the, the postseason work and what we put like four I thought innings. you were in favor of Paddock. You thought he was going to be a good starter for us. I, I think he'll be I, I think he'll be all right. I just it, there's still so many question marks and how how many innings is he going to be able to give you? And that's a, it's the same thing with Discofani. Like he, he had a good year a couple years ago in, in San Francisco and I just the past two years haven't been great. So okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I, I agree with Noah. I mean, I think the upside for Chris Paddock is is exciting. <clears throat> I, I mean, he uh, he had electric stuff 
and obviously he had, you know, surgery and he's back. As we know, those kind of arm surgeries, <laughs> you can be you can be stronger coming back from those um, if you can locate pitches. And I thought he did a really good job. The fact that Paddock fought his way back last year to actually get a few innings right. at the end of the year was showed me that like he his desire level to in some reason for some reason I felt like that was like I, I was impressed with that and and Joe Ryan has a still has upside I think I last year for Joe Ryan, Ryan was Joe Ryan man I do Joe Ryan went through some growing pains last year there's yeah. no doubt about it and well, they, they lied to us about yeah. him being injured because he sucked and well, he, here's the know. thing i would rather have a guy like that go no man i can still play man like even if, because it shows you that he is that kind of competitor and if he was hurt and he should have stepped back yep okay but as noah says he's a younger guy but i like that fire where like even if he's injured he thinks he can still win the game I well, like and, and, and people forget, and I just saw this the other day, that before his injury in, in Atlanta or whatever it was, he was like top five, yep. uh, like a top five pitcher in the game. Like he was a, an absolute stud for that first half of the year. So I, he absolutely, if he can locate the, the fastball, like he's going to be, he's going to be a stud. Okay. Now before spring training even begins, I want you guys both, both to, to chime in on this. The twins win the division this year. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, they do. I mean, it's a. I mean, I think Kansas City might be the second best team this year. They got a B minus <laughs> rating on their off season moves. <clears throat> well, I don't know. I don't put a lot of stock into those those things. But, but uh, <laughs> can I just tell you, I got a real good buddy in Chicago who's a Sox fan, and he said that the that fan base is so pissed off now yeah i know yeah there they was like a, they were gonna do a they were gonna do like a off season like christmas like <laughs> event and they canceled it because because there was people no one was buying tickets and nobody <laughs> wanted anything to do with it they hate this they're so pissed at the socks right now okay uh, so another chicago kind of a, i kind of like that yeah 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 another chicago deal because i saw this uh, and I don't know enough. So, uh, uh, Cubs Japanese player that they got showed up. Uh, Imanaga. Yeah. So apparently, it was another pitcher from the Cubs. I don't have his name right off the bat, but they said they watched him throw a bullpen session the other day, and he said, "I'm buying Topps baseball cards just to get that guy's." Just to get that guy's uh, card, Chris. What do you know about him? Um, I mean, I looked at I looked him up. Uh, I, I saw some videos. It's interesting. Like, it's like he can do it all, right? Or no, no. I'm thinking of the dot the Dodgers guy. Yeah, the Dodgers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know much about the Cubs. The Cubs all guy. Right. What do you guys know? No. About that? He's he's a he was a stud in in Japan, um, big on that that team Japan. If you watch the uh, the World Baseball Classic the other year, um, and I believe it was him that that yeah people are going to be buying those tops cards because he was such a everyone was talking about Yamamoto and where he was going and everyone knew he's going to the Dodgers right um, but Shoto kind of kind of just came out of nowhere or everyone just kind of forgot about him but but this guy can pitch. And it, it's giving me uh, kind of when you Darvish came in, into the scene that, that it's kind of the same, uh, mm -hmm. same thing. You Darvish from the mm -hmm. left side though, maybe. Okay. All right. Uh, maybe last, last topic there, Chris. Uh, I know we talked a little bit, but um, I don't know if you've seen any former podcasts about this topic, but uh, Joe Maurer first ballot. Mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. Your thoughts? Of course, of course, I've seen. Of course, I've listened to the podcast. By the way, and if I, I think. By the way, the Timberwolves. The last one, the Timberwolves one, was great. And uh, and I couldn't help but think that 
that I wanted to disagree that 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 Jimmy Butler would would be absolutely better than Carl. No, Anthony no, no, no. Anyway, okay, yeah, let's stick with one. Uh, uh, Joe Maher. You know, it's Johnny. We've talked about this a lot, and part of, for it was frustrating to me because, you know, in the in the two thousands, you know, you and I were hanging out as we do, and and. Uh, and there, there were some, you know, competitive teams, you know, every year. And it was, and it was all, you know, we had the, the piranhas and we had, you know, we had Guardy and, and we had some good players and, and, and we had Joe Maurer and it, that was, a, it was super exciting when he was young. And then when, and then all of a sudden as a twins fan, you're like, okay, we need to put this together. And then all of a sudden Joe's got, mysterious leg injuries and, right. and, um, and now he's not catching and he's playing first base and, and, and you're like, okay, you know, you're trying to roll with this and, and, and all of a sudden his production numbers are down. And then you start thinking, I mean, I'm fat, I'm, I'm going through this, these years fast here, but then you're like, well, wait now. So he's a first baseman. And is that really the, you know, do you want your first baseman hitting eight home runs and, you know, and batting, you know, three Oh four. Um, yeah, mostly it's kind of like, kinda like Doug Mankiewicz, singles. you know, reboot when you right. think about it, but he's Joe Maurer and he's, you know, and he's got, you know, he, 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 every at bat, he takes two, the first two strikes and then he's off to the races or whatever. I mean, right. but <clears throat> it, so we watched the most frustrating years of Joe Maurer. Those were the ones where he was really, not productive when you needed him. He was not clutch, and the numbers I've done the research on his clutchness because you can measure that, and it it sucked. You know, he couldn't drive. He, he's not the guy that was going to drive r runs in. He was the guy that was going to pass the baton in the lineup all the time. Um, you know, and so as invested Twins fans, we were frustrated, and we and there weren't. There were probably more Twins fans in this area that still idolized and loved Joe Maurer because, right. you know, he's a nice guy and, you know, local kid. So even within the Twins faithful, we were, I think, a smaller group. We got bigger because I think people did get frustrated with Joe Maurer. But, but guys like you and me, Johnny, we were like, are you kidding me? This is can this contract be over? Are you, I remember thinking we got two more years of this. And then I was like, we got, Oh crap. We got another year of this. And then when it was over, I was like, thank you. I mean, I, it sucks, but I, I was, I was really happy to finally be done with that. Um, and that's what, you know, that's the taste that was left in my mouth. Now, if I separate myself and I look at his stats, he's off, he's a, he's a hall of famer. He's a hall of famer, especially, you know, he won three batting titles. There's not a player that has right won three batting titles that is not a made the Hall of Fame and a catcher too, right? Now, um, and he did. He ballot, won them all as a catcher, I believe, too. First, like, first his, right? First ballot Hall of Famer. Well, no, I mean, and it's interesting because it's it's funny to th when you know Johnny. We've only seen one of our players that we grew up watching as a, a twin make it to the Hall of Fame. Um, I guess you could say Jack Morris, but he didn't play very much with us, right. you know. Um, and he's that's questionable whether he should be a Hall of Famer. I think he should, but but Kirby Puckett was an undeniable first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah. You know, he's one of the greatest players ever. Um, and so that was easy, but you know, we didn't. We we're always on. We were always looking at Major League Baseball. We were always the ones looking at other teams players other guys right that we, that were on other teams and trying to you know in our minds are these guys worthy you know and we'd cr crunch the numbers and stuff but now you kind of see it's like when it's your guy that you that you bled with for many years and you watch the rest of the world looking in at you they're crunching numbers too and they're like well he's got this number and that number and that number and that's how it goes they don't know they didn't suffer through those years like we did do you think so, do you think do you think joe mauer would have been a hall of famer had he taken that big 10-year deal to the yankees and gone to the yankees do you think he would have been a hall of famer 
I say no. I to hurt his chances, I don't think. Uh, are, you, are you saying like the the, the, I, the fact that he's played with one team his whole career? I I don't know. I just think I I don't even know if he was consistent with the Twins like you were talking about the last eight years well, of his career. two chapters of his career. I mean, right. there was the front. So the if back. he would have gone to New York, would he have even been able to stay an even keel, or would his numbers gone down? He he's not built for New York. I mean, well, there's a reason why he didn't go anywhere. You right, know, right. I think behind the scenes he insisted he would stay. I mean, they signed him for a big contract, and and I think he was wanted to make sure that he would retire here, which was a smart decision because you know he's an icon here, and he wouldn't yeah. be in New York. <laughs> he right. would just be a, a right. forgettable name. I brought this up before, but I still don't understand. If it's such the great story, how come there hasn't been a 30 for 30 on him? Because it would be the greatest story, right? Because he's from Minnesota. Because <laughs> he didn't Minnesota. win anything. Well, then maybe they should uh, They should do it. It's weird, though. It's weird because you, you, know, you, you see that the people that vote, the sports writers from around the country, they don't pay attention to the twins. I guess, why right. would you really? And the one guy who is paid to pay attention to the twins didn't vote for him. Yeah, right. First ballot. Well, that that because you're right. He wasn't a first ballot. He wasn't. <laughs> that's a, that Neal says said everything. He was, yeah, well, I'm. That's because Lavelli Neal knows he saw. All of that you saw that second half I that agree. slog. Ugh. I agree, and I'm not saying Lo Lavelli wouldn't vote for him in future Hall of Fame. Of course you, yeah, you're right. That's yeah, a good point. First ballot, you're right. He didn't didn't do it. All right. Well, but we should think, let's celebrate Joe Mar. He's a hell of a nice guy, and I'm not even joking. He's yep. he's a very nice guy. He is a nice so, guy. So I'm That's, happy for him. St. Paul, represent. And don't get me wrong. I was not poo-pooing him getting in the Hall of Fame. I just, there were some things I didn't understand. Oh, I could go back. I don't think you were, I could go back on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you did not want him in there. There was some poo-pooing, I, I, <laughs> I gather. I'm saying now, after the fact, let's honor him. That's great. Thank you, Noah, for bringing that up. Yeah, he's right. All right. Uh, anything else about the Minnesota Twins, Chris Castino? Well, I just – everybody needs to lay off of, of ownership and management because – especially management because those guys are in a tough position. They have to they have to make the, the, the fans happy and the owners happy, and it's – and I think they're walking the tightrope right now, and, it's, and, and we're going to have a good season. So I'll leave it at that. All right, Noah. Anything else? I know we kept you out of the game for most of the night. I'm sorry. No, no. I to 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 Chris's point. Like I was going to say that actually earlier today was. I think for for the 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 constraints that <clears throat> that management has has received this year that that Falvey has 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 been given. He has done a great job this offseason for for what he has been given. Looking at the bullpen and and and. The young guys coming up. I, I think he's done a good job. I, I I do think that the ownership could could fix some stuff, but but given There's the his time, constraint. and I think they, they will they're they're gonna sign a pitcher. I, I really believe that they're gonna sign well, a starter. Just remember Castro a lot out there field every day, man. <laughs> what? I said Castro can't play center field every day. Yeah, there's that Looks too. I I'm just saying, what what else do you got? Harrison Bader. We did talk about that. Well, all right. Thank you. Yeah. Chris, will you come back sometime? I mean, because obviously, you know, a little, you're not like, you know, it wasn't like, folks, we were bringing you Eddie Vedder talking about fucking Cubs baseball. This guy is a musician who actually knows about your team and about the sport of baseball. So I'm going to ask you, are you going to come back and talk baseball with us again? Uh, yeah, anytime. I can't wait to. It's hey, all right. Pitchers and catchers two days from now. I know it. I love it. Great. Do it. Great. Great Thanks, time guys. to be alive. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, Chris Castino for joining us tonight. Um, we hope to see you back again. And for Noah Storzing, you've been watching the Show to Be Named Later podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Big woo.